everybody. In this video, I'm going to be talking about, uh, well, very informally, talking about um, Lagrangian mechanics and the principle of least action. So, a few videos ago, I um, I made a video on a certain brilliant problem that was basically you had a bunch of zigzagging lines and a rectangle and you had to find uh, the minimum length or the minimum sum of all these lengths and I, I, I noted that um, that light would take uh, the, the light always takes the quickest path right and while this is true there's a more general sense in which um, na nature is very optimizational. And this is uh, what's called the principle of least action. So if we have two, two points, A and B, right? And they, they travel this, this path in, in some time, in some time T, let's say three seconds, right? So A goes to B in three seconds. Then, however, whatever nature did, right, was um, was basically however I mean, like however this this object traveled from A to B in three seconds, it did so in some optimal way, and that optimum is basically for any point uh, let's say P on this path right the object has what we call a Lagrangian now the Lagrangian is equal to the kinetic energy of the object minus the potential energy and what the principle of least action says is that the the integral of the Lagrangian over all the posi over position space is minimized. That is, whatever curve a to b, right? Basically, this was this was minimized. Um. The, I get, and that's and this is very sort of informal uh, talking about it, but but this is, is this is the general the general sense. Now there's a famous uh, problem in sort of math slash physics uh, called the Bercris the Bercristochron problem, which I'm gonna have <laughs> problems uh, pronouncing, and um, Black pen, red pen, uh, not black. Uh, three blue, one brown did an excellent video on this problem already. Um, but I will actually be using what is called the calculus of variations to to also solve the problem. Uh, but I recommend that you, before watching my video on the Brachistogram problem, I recommend that you watch his video. So I will put that in the description of both this video and my next video um, but there are certain things that that he discusses in that video specifically properties of a cycloid that I will not be proving myself um, but I will actually be going through uh, a more rigorous uh, showing that that the cycloid because what, as it turns out, so the Brachistochrome problem is basically you have two points, A and B, and um, the, you basically, the only force acting is gravity. So, so you're basically on a frictionless slide, and you're sliding down. You want to know what path will, will minimize the time it takes to, to go from this point A to this point B. So you're minimizing time. So you basically, you set up an integral involving time, and then you minimize it. Um, so you want to find the curve 
that minimizes an integral. And so this is called calculus of variations. And there's a specific differential equation that we can use uh, to, to solve uh, for what y should be. So uh, as you'll see in my proof, uh, I call it a proof, is that we're sort of going to assume that that y will be the cycloid. Um, or at least we'll, we'll show that, that it's the cycloid, but using um, properties that emerge from uh, from the equation we get, basically out of out of doing the math. Um, but basically, he he shows in the video that uh, if you have a tangent line to this cycloid path, and you have this is y, uh, so the height from any point on the curve to a that's y, and then you call this angle with the tangent line and the vertical theta, then the cycloid is the point such that sine of theta over square root of y is a constant. Um, so I'll actually be showing, so we'll get some equation and I'll actually show that that our y, whatever y minimizes the path, has to withhold this um, these properties. So in the video the the proof that they discuss is, is using Snell's law, sort of an infinite version of Snell's law and and sort of what path light would take from A to B. Um, but as you see I'll, mine will be much more mathematical. Um, So I guess I should probably introduce uh, the the equation that I'm going to be using in the next in the next video, and that is if we have some integral of f, and f is a function in terms of x, y, and the derivative of y with respect to x. So we're assuming x, you know, y is a function of x, uh, and this is with respect to x. So this is i. Calculus of variations deals with finding curves, basically functions y, such that this integral is minimized, or not just minimized, but finds an extreme value. Um, and so the equation, which is called the Euler-Lagrange equation, states that the partial of f with respect to y how is a very bad partial, uh, is equal to the derivative with respect to x of the partial of f with respect to uh, the derivative of y. And so this is, this is nice, but as it turns out for our Brachistogram problem, this isn't the form of the Euler-Lagrange. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is called the Euler-Lagrange equation. So I don't know if I said that, but there's actually another form. If if f has no direct dependence on x, so if if you can express f as a function in terms of y and y prime, and as it turns out, we can do that for our Brachistogram problem. Then instead we have f minus y prime times the partial of f with respect to y prime is equal to a constant. So this is if there's no x dependence, then we can use this uh, formulation of the Euler-Lagrange equation. And so that's what I'll be using in, in the video. So basically, I mean, you just take a partial and then, you know, clear s denominators and, and stuff until you get something. And then I'll show that that um, that 
that whatever we get that we have to have this property that sine theta over square root of y is equal to c so constant I, I actually think that um, no I don't think those constants are the same but but we'll, we'll see that that it ends up being very close um, closely related, related to that, these two C's uh, so that's um, for the next video I just wanted to sort of introduce uh, some terminology and stuff and so I will see you in that video